This week, we interrupt our regularly scheduled programming to bring you Should Vegans Eat Organic Food? In the last couple of months, it keeps popping up in the vegan YouTube community that somehow organic food is not vegan and vegans should avoid it and eat instead conventionally grown food. As a vegan myself, starting a new market garden here in Southeast Alaska, I am really interested in this question. Just to introduce myself and to give context for why I'm even talking about this at all, I am Mary Catherine Ivy, Kathy Mary Ivy, M. Catherine Ivy, and I just go by Catherine, Catherine Ivy. I was hired by the Environmental Protection Agency as an environmental engineer, and I worked there for seven years. So I care a lot about the environment and human health, and I also care a lot about how non-human animals are treated. I left the EPA with an interest in growing food, and I've been working on that project in fits and starts over the years, and if you're interested in hearing about that background, I'll leave a link up above and in the video description. Okay, so let's get right into this, starting with a definition of vegan. I'm going to use the vegan society's definition. Veganism is a way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. So, for example, we all drive to get places that we need to go, and through that we end up splattering bugs on the windshield and maybe even a bird or two might run over a possum on the road but it's not possible to avoid those harms and we require driving as part of our modern living so we're, we can still be vegan and drive. So the argument is that we shouldn't be eating organic food because Organically grown food requires manure, and manure comes from cows that are being treated cruelly and exploited and killed. And so any food grown with manure then would not be vegan. So there are a couple things to address with this argument. And first of all, let's start with a different example. So for example, Bees are required to pollinate some plants, like especially almonds, and apples, and cherries, and avocados. So as vegans, this is a direct exploitation of honeybees. Are we not allowed to eat apples or almonds? That's the same thinking if we're not allowed to eat food grown organically with manure, which is an indirect use, we certainly shouldn't be allowed to eat almonds, sunflowers, grapes and apples, and other foods that are pollinated by honeybees commercially by the same thinking. I think that most vegans would agree that eating almonds and apples and things like that are something that we can do. and if we're going to do anything, we need to talk about agricultural practices and um, what are ways that farmers can have uh, native bee populations that can pollinate their crops. Is that something that's possible? Think about things like that. But I don't think we're going to eliminate those foods from our diet because if you start going down that road, pretty soon we're going to become breath breatharians. So um, in the same way, we should be able to eat organically grown food that uses a byproduct of an industry that exploits animals and work on changing agricultural practices so that manures aren't being used. But then the argument would go, okay, so we do have an option though to organic farming. We could eat food grown through conventional farming. It's more readily available. It doesn't use manure. It uses um, nitrogen inputs. And so that would be the better choice for a vegan. 
before we can make that decision, I think we have to look pretty closely at, you know, what is involved in conventional farming and what is involved in organic farming. And we can do that by taking a look at the history of agriculture in the United States. Um, around the, you know, end of World War II, there was what was called at the time the Green Revolution, where, you know, kind of better living through chemicals, better farming through chemicals. Um, nitrogen, which can be created through petroleum products, could be used directly to feed plants in farming. And also there were herbicides then that um, could kill any weeds. And if a farmer had problems with pests, then there were pesticides. And so it was that that is what farming became and in fact that is what um, the university extensions were encouraging and it was the future of farming but a number of decades into this experiment there were some troubling things going on uh, groundwater surface water was being contaminated with excess nitrogen and the herbicides and pesticides was uh, directly killing animals, degrading habitat, and also affecting the health of farm workers. There were a number of other things, other problems that were associated with conventional farming, and what it led to was some farmers who were doing things differently saying, hey, you know, we'd like farming to be something where you're not degrading the soil and the water and the surrounding habitat where you're actually at least maintaining and maybe even improving. So what this eventually led to in the United States was the passage of the National Organic Program through the USDA. And in Part 205, Subpart C, Section 205-200, it says that production practices implemented in accordance with this subpart must maintain or improve the natural resources of the operation including soil and water quality. So I think that is important to look at that again. It says that practices must maintain or improve the natural resources of the operation, including soil and water quality. These farmers were using methods such as composting, growing green manures, doing crop rotation, putting out netting to keep out insects, and they wanted to be able to have a standard that could show to customers that they were using methods that maintained the quality of the soil and water. I've heard um, people say that, well, gosh, you know, organic farming, you know, uses as much pesticides as conventional farming, and actually the manure is a whole lot worse than just the nitrogen, and and so you know, conventional farming would be preferable since we are not exploiting animals or using materials, we're not using byproducts from exploited animals, so we should choose the conventional. But we need to look at the rules for how pesticides are applied in organic agriculture, because some pesticides are allowed, mostly they're natural pesticides. There are some synthetics that are allowed. So in that same subpart C, Section 205-206, it talks about crop pests, weeds, and disease management practices. And it says that pest problems may be controlled through mechanical or physical methods, including but not limited to. And it lists a bunch of different things that an organic farmer can do. And then it says at the very bottom, when the practices provided for in paragraphs A through D of this section are insufficient, it goes on to talk about, okay, then you can use some organic or even the few synthetic options to control the pests. It says, provided that the conditions for using the substance are documented in the organic system plan. So this is like a last ditch sort of thing. You've got to use all these other practices and if for some reason you're looking at a situation where you're going to lose a whole crop, you might be able to use a a pesticide that is allowed under under these regulations, but it would have to be in a plan that's that's 
accepted by you know the regulators. But it always comes back to that general statement that practices must maintain or improve the natural resources of the operation, including soil and water quality. Otherwise, this isn't organic farming. So then I've been hearing people talking about all of the copper sulfate that these organic farmers are using compared to the conventional farmers. And of course this is the case because organic farmers have a much more limited number of things that they can use when they have problems. And of course they can only use it when they have an improved plan. Whereas conventional farmers have what, like 900 different things that they can use, much more hardcore chemicals. And of course that's what they're gonna be using on their fields when they have a problem. So instead, let's take a look at the most commonly used pesticides in conventional farming compared to those used in organic farming. And we have to remember that these are being used in organic farming when all other methods are not working and then they've been approved as part of a plan. So in this article it says the most commonly used insecticide in the United States is chlorpyrifos. This is an organophosphate pesticide, part of a class of chemicals that according to three recent independent studies can lower children's IQ by an average of as much as seven points enough to affect a child's math and reading skills. The most commonly used fungicide is chlorothalonil, which the EPA rates as very highly toxic to aquatic organisms and which the agency warns is used at levels of concern in potato and peanut production. Compare those to natural pesticides, the most commonly used natural occurring insecticide, Bt, a bacterium found in soils. Bt is effective at killing boll weevils, cabbage leafers, and corn earworms, and it's not toxic to humans. Two of the other most common approved insecticides are neem oil and insecticidal soaps. The active ingredients in insecticidal soaps is potassium salts. No danger to people there. Neem is so benign that it appears in some brands of toothpaste. And he says, I have yet to see any dental hygiene products containing chlorpyrifos. I think we have to be careful when we're looking at information out there about organic farming versus conventional farming because these are two competing industries. Organic products are one of the fastest growing sectors in agriculture, so there's going to be some pushback. It's uh, very much like the meat and dairy industry versus the soy industry. And then you find information out there that, oh no, if you eat soy, you're going to get man boobs. So we have learned some things about organic versus conventional farming. And the longest ongoing study is being done by the Rodal Institute, a 30-year study. And they found, as interestingly enough, it actually took a number of years before organic was able to improve over conventional farming. But what they found at that point that organic yields match conventional yields. Organic outperforms conventional in years of drought. Organic farming systems build rather than deplete soil organic matter, making it more sustainable system. Organic farming uses 45% less energy and is more efficient. Conventional systems produce 40% more greenhouse gases. Organic farming systems are more profitable than conventional. And they did look at um, a number of different systems. They look at organic manure, an organic legume, which is an organic green manure, conventional synthetic, and a no-till no systems on in both cases. And um, something else they found was that carbon increases were highest in the organic manure system followed by the organic legume system. The conventional system has shown a loss in carbon in more recent years. Organic fields increased groundwater recharge and reduced runoff, which is really important because with conventional farming, that's been the problem. The whole impetus to move on to something different was that we're using nitrogen synthetic fertilizers, we're using these herbicides and pesticides that just run off into the surface water, kill wildlife, degrade habitat, contributing to these dead zones we have, for example, in the Gulf of Mexico. I think this is a good time to bring up the issue of manure because I think there's a myth out there that manure, animal manure, is required as part of organic farming. But in this 30-year trial, they did a couple of different organic systems. It's the organic manure system where they actually used animal manure and they also used legumes or what's called a green manure. And then they also did a system of organic legumes where it was only legumes, it was only green manures. And they both 
perform well. They talked about the organic manure system having the highest amount of carbon, followed by the legume system, and then the conventional synthetic system had actually a loss of carbon in more recent years. So the downsides of conventional farming are multiple, whereas organic farming outperforms conventional farming and doesn't cause the habitat degradation, the wildlife loss, etc., the human health concerns. And so in this case, we really should be choosing organic farming as vegans. We can look at this like with the honeybee in that in future, it would be great if farming practices used wild bee populations to pollinate their crops. And the same thing with organic farming, you know, rather than using this cheap manure as part of an exploitative industry, let's move to other sources of fertilizer for the organic farming. And in this way, we can move from organic farming into veganic farming, which is vegan organic farming. And there are a lot more farms popping up now using that method. And that's a natural progression, whereas you're not going to go from conventional farming with application of synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides to veganic farming. There's a lot more that can be said about this topic, but I think that it's clear that vegans should be supporting organic farming when they can. I think that conventional farming and organic farming can be considered vegan at this point only because it's there's nothing else right now that is possible or practicable and so if a person has only has access or only can afford conventional conventionally grown foods then that is perfectly fine for a vegan to eat those foods and if a person has access to and can afford organic foods then that's what we should be supporting and in the end, I think that haggling over all of these little details makes veganism seem like this wacko ideology and that we really should just stick to the vegan definition where it says there are many ways to embrace vegan living, yet one thing all vegans have in common is a plant-based diet, avoiding all animal foods such as meat, dairy, eggs, and honey, as well as avoiding animal-derived materials, products tested on animals, and places that use animals for entertainment. It'd be really nice if I had a big old log in the back here so that I could kind of mound up the soil. I need a couple of trees cut down, um, but it's kind of a pain using the chainsaw, trying to de limb if it's pouring down rain and we're getting a forecast for a lot of rain. So it wasn't raining very much, so I thought I'd get out and get some work done. <laughs>